Hello guys, how are you doing today? May the Lord bless you. Uh, may the Lord uh, strengthen you. And may the Lord uh, answer your prayers. So whatever you guys are going through right now, I pray that the Lord will be there with you. That you will feel His presence. Okay guys, today I want to talk to you guys about the deception of being rich the deception of having money the holy spirit put that in, in, in my mind to talk to you guys about that before i begin i want to read to you guys what the bible says about having money having money with the wrong perspective okay having money having a lot of money is not wrong is not evil but having the right perspective when you have a lot of money when you have a lot of money you need to have the right perspective you need to have an eternal perspective not temporary because money can corrupt you so let me read to you what jesus says about money so I'm going to start on, uh, this is Matthew 19, verses 16. So this is Jesus in the rich young ruler. Now behold, one came and said to him, Good teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? So this, this rich ruler have the right perspective because he's searching for eternal life. So Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but the one that is God. But if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. So if you want eternal life, you have to keep the commandments. That's what Jesus said to him. He said to him, Which one? Jesus said, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, uh, false witness, honor your father and your mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Okay? And the young man said to him, All these things I have kept from my youth, what do I still lack? Okay? Jesus said to him, If you want to be perfect, Go and sell what you have, and give to the poor, and you have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went always sorrowful, for he had great possession. And um, Jesus said, But surely I say to you, that it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven, and again, I say to you, it is easier for a camel to go to the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. When his, when his disciples heard it, they were greatly as astonished, saying, who, they can, who can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said, with man this is impossible, with God all things are possible. So, What's interesting about this uh, passage is that <clears throat> the um, the rich man he said he kept all the commandments. You know, he said you know he, he didn't commit adultery. He did not. He honored his father and mother, and he loved his neighbor as himself. But Jesus caught him in a trick. Because he said he kept he, he honored the commandments, he did all those things, but he loved money, right? So he had a love for money. That's the reason why the Bible said he went away sorrowful, because he had great possession. So he was lying the whole time. Because if he said he loved um if he said he loved the neighbor as he loved himself. The way he said he kept all these commandments, he loved God, and um, he kept God's commitment. But then you have money, 
and and you holding on to that money, and 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 then you're not willing to um, to share that money. So how do you love your neighbor as you love yourself? Okay, so that's how sometimes people say things, you know, but God sees their heart. So you may say a lot of things, but God sees the type of person you really are. You know, your possession means more to you than your relationship with God. You know, the problem with a lot of rich people, they put their security, they put their trust in their wealth instead of putting their trust in God. So that's one of the biggest problems with, with, with the rich. The more comfortable they are, you know, they, they don't really want nothing to do with God. A poor person, if they cannot pay, if they don't know where the next meal is coming from, if they do not know how they're going to pay their rent, they get down on their knees and they ask God, please help me. But if you're rich, you really know your house is paid for and you are comfortable, you don't need God. Why would you? You don't need to get down on your knees and pray to God because you have everything that you need. So that's the problem with the, um, with the rich ruler. He had everything that he needed. So now Jesus is telling him to sell everything and follow him. And so he couldn't do that. You know, because his possession means more to him than, than eternal life. So, so sometimes people say they want to follow God. But when you really look, I mean, they're not willing to sacrifice you know they're not willing to um to to give their all <clears throat> to follow jesus christ they still want to hold on to this world to their possession to their career you know so jesus um that person may be like oh you know i want to do this for god i want to do that for god but the Lord is calling upon you to go on missionary. You know, he wants you to be a missionary. He wants you to leave everything that you have in the States and go to a third world country or poor country and spread the gospel. You're not willing to do that. You're not willing to, um, you know, quit your job and pursue God. He wants you to, you know, turn, that, turn away from that and focus on serving him, you know. But you care more about having money you care more about having a comfortable living than following God. So that's the same thing with the rich ruler. You know, if you really want to serve God with all your heart, you have to um, sell all your possession. Most people are not willing to surrender all to God. You know, they want to give God 50%. Some want to give God only 25% of their life, you know? Does having money, but you're having the wrong perspective in life. Money's not going to last you for long, you know? So what happens if there's an economic collapse? Like some of those countries around the world, Venezuela, Zimbabwe, you know, they wake up, a lot of people in those countries that had a lot of money, they wake up one day and find out that that money is worthless because of inflation. Inflation, the the dollar, that their money depreciate by eighty percent, ninety percent. So essentially, it's worthless. You know, right now there's a lot of economy that's in um, where the the infl inflation, where the the their money doesn't really worth a whole lot. So, for example, if you have a hundred thousand dollars in the bank. You, that's probably, you might be able to use that to buy a loaf of bread. That's what happens when your economy depreciates. So, you may be rich in the United States you live in. Everything's going well. You have a lot of money in the bank. So, what happens if all of a sudden the economy collapses? What are you going to do? Are you going to kill yourself? Some people will commit suicide. Because they place their trust in money instead of instead of placing their trust in God. And us as believers, we have to be careful. We have to be careful, guys, not 
to get caught up in the propaganda, get caught up in the culture of this world of having money, where money is about everything. We have to be careful about that, especially living in, in, in America. In America, everything's money. When you live in a capitalist system, it's all about having money. Money equals power. The more money you have, the more power you have. That's because people who live like that, they have a temporary outlook, temporary perspective on life. Us, as true born-again believers in Jesus Christ, we have to live for eternity. We cannot store our treasure on this earth where the thieves and, and moth come in and eat up your treasures. You have to st store up your treasures in heaven. How do you st store up treasures in heaven? By honoring your God, by honoring the Lord Jesus Christ, by obeying his commandments, by taking care of those who are vulnerable, those who are oppressed, serving other people. That's how you store up treasures in heaven. Okay? When you store up your treasures in heaven, it's safe. It's eternal. Money does not last very long. Our life on this earth is blip. It's just a blip. Okay? So some people will do whatever it takes to get, to, to get a lot of money. They will skid on their spouse. They will lie. They will do all kind of immoral act in order to get money. You know? People who live their life like that, when you care, all he cares about is money, it's going to lead to your destruction. Okay? If you love money more than you love God, then there's a separation. There's a great chasm between you and God. Anything you idolize before your creator, there's a great chasm. There's a separation right there. And if you die like that, you are totally separate from God forever. We have to stop living for, for today. Stop living for this world and start living for what's eternal. And if you read in, um, I'm going to read to you guys what it says in James. James 5, it says, Come on now, you rich, weep and howl, and howl for your misery that are about coming upon you. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are are moth eaten your gold and silver are corroded and the corrosion will be a witness against you and will eat your flesh like fire you have heap up treasures in the last days indeed the wages of the laborers who are more your field who more your fields which you kept back by fraud cry out in the cries of the reapers have reached the ears of the Lord of the Sabbath. You have lived on the earth in pleasure and luxury. You have fattened your hearts as in a day of slaughter. You have condemned, you have murdered the just. He does not resist you. Therefore, be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it reached the earth the early and latter rain. You also be patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Okay? So, in the Bible, there are people, there are Christians, there are believers that are rich. You have Job. You have King David. Solomon. And then we go to the New Testament. You have the um, Joseph of Arimitemia, I'm sorry, I may not be pronouncing that right. Joseph was the one that lent his tomb so they could bury Jesus. So he had his own tomb. tomb. He had his own tomb so that they used that tomb to bury Jesus. So he was the one of the people who support Jesus' ministry. And so there were some people that support Jesus' ministry that had money. Having money in itself is not a bad thing. But loving money more than your God is a bad thing. Idolatry, worshiping money, putting money before everything, that will lead to your destruction. Okay, it's corruption. 
There you have people who you you have um you know you know you, you have and people that's working for you, but you're not treating them well. You refuse to give them um you refuse to pay for the health insurance and you have plenty of money. You're not you want you trying to nickel and dime them every chance you get. You mistreat them. You know, and they, they're working for you. You know you could pay them better. You know you could provide health care for them. You know you can uh, um, pay for their vacation. But no, you just want to gobble all the money for yourself. Just keep everything to yourself and pay your employees minimum wage. You have CEOs that's making 400 times more money than the, um, re than the regular employees. You pay an employee ten dollars an hour, and you make like millions of dollars a year. Those kind of people have a hell fire that awaits them. That's why it says by in James, your soul will be burned forever in hell because you are wicked, you are evil. Okay, you worship money, and you will die with your money. A fool and his money will soon be parted. Okay. People like that, unless they repent, unless they humble, they will be destroyed, they will be perished. Rich people do not impress me. The kind of people that impress me is the kind of people that serve other people, that serve Jesus Christ, that serve God first. Okay? I don't care about how much money you have. You will perish with your money. That's what Peter said to, some, to one of the... Um, people that was trying to buy, you know, you know, I forgot that verse in the Bible, but Peter said the same thing. He said, you will perish with your money. A fool and his money will soon be, will soon be parted. Okay. If you have money, you're a Christian, you got to use it to do good. You got to use it to help those Christians who are less fortunate. Use it to help Christians in the poorer countries. You should be able to help Christians in, in different countries around the world. Why do you need a, 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 a $5 million mention? You're a Christian. I understand if you make that money, your hard earned money in a business, that's fine. That's your own business. But a pastor should not be living a $5 million mention. A pastor should not be having like 5 or 10 or $25 million on private jet. There's so many people out there that's hurting. There's so many people out there that's poor. There's so many people out there that that's just desperate to survive. But you want to use your money. You want to use that money, use the church money to buy um, jet, private jet, mansion. You will be, you will be, you will suffer eternity in hell for that. Because your heart is not right with God. You never liked Jesus. You wanted to use Jesus as a way to make money. And you will pay a price for that. We have to understand that money, the love of money is the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of all evil, all corruption. All corruption. That's the reason why we go to war over nonsense, over greed. That's why the United States is always in a state of war. The United States has been in conflict ever since the beginning of its um, birth. It's always one conflict after the other. It's all about greed. It's all about money. It has nothing to do with uh, democracy. It has nothing to do with freedom. It's all about money. Greed. You know? If that's what you want to do, if you want to live your life pursuing money, pursuing power, that's fine. But most people will be dead by 75 or 80 years old. And then you're going to spend eternity in the lake of fire. Good luck. Take as much money as you want. Cheat on your taxes. Rob people. Mistreat people. Don't pay your employees. Uh, nickel and dime them. Just hurt people so you could become rich. You know, stiff your contractors. You know, just do whatever that's going to make you happy. That's going to make you rich. That's going to give you power. 
because once you take your last breath, once you breathe your last breath, then it's destruction. It's eternal torment. You know? Yo, you cannot buy your way into heaven. God doesn't need your donation. God doesn't care you giving money to the church when you are corrupt. The prayer of those of the um, sinner is an abomination to God. When you're not right with God, He doesn't need your prayer. It's an abomination. That's what the Bible says. The prayer of the wicked is an abomination to God. So, so, so you you mistreating your employees, you uh, um, you robbing, you nickel and dime them. You don't want to pay them. You don't want to pay the health insurance, and you have a lot of money. So you now you're taking some money, giving money to the church, giving money to charity. So you think that's gonna please God? You know, you're trying to stop your employees from joining your union so they could help, you know, get a better working condition so they be able to take care of the family. You're trying to stop that, but then you want to give millions of dollars away to to Christian organization or stuff like that or. or climate change, you think that's going to get you into heaven? I guarantee you, you will not enter heaven. You will not enter heaven. God does not need your money. If you are wicked, He doesn't need your money. He doesn't need you to help other people out if you are a wicked person. You know, a lot of people, just they just want to be their own God. They just want to be God. They want to play God. You know, they get to decide Oh, I'm gonna give some money to charity. I'm gonna help um, boys and girls. I'm gonna give all these. I'm gonna do all these good things. Give all this money away, so God could, out, so my good could outweigh my bad, so I could enter heaven. It does not work like that. You must be born again. You must turn away from your sin. You must truly love people. You must just not do good things just because it's gonna appease your conscience. And you think that's gonna get you into heaven? You can buy your way into heaven. You must truly born again and turn away from your sins. And if you are struggling with a love for money, you have a love in your heart, you idolize money, get down on your knees and ask Jesus to help you. We all have our weakness. We all have our strength. If loving money is your weakness, you get you need to ask Jesus to help you out. You need to get down on your knees and say, Lord, please help me. I'm, I love money way too much. I shouldn't be loving money like that as a believer. As somebody who loves Christ, I should not be loving money. You should not love money at all. You know? You should not have no love in your heart for money. You have money, use it to do good. You use money to take care of those who are less fortunate. That's all money is. If you think it's by it, by having a lot of money, if you see, feel like that's separating you from the Lord, you start giving it away. It's deception. Because people that have a lot of money, they are deceived because they're thinking that the money is everything. The money could protect them. The money could kill them. Um, you know, it just, they have money so they don't need God. That's a deception. So what happens if you lose all your money? People lose all their money all the time in the stock market. People lose their money in bad investment deals, bad business deals. Some people commit suicide because that was their God. They idolize money. I mean, how many mansions do you need? How many cars do you need? What do you need 30 cars? What do you need 5,000? What do you need 10 mansions? What do you need all this stuff? You know? It's just that we are living in a depraved society who's corrupted by sin, who does not honor their God, who does not know who their creator is. You know? We, we, we worship the creature, we worship idolatry, we worship nonsense that doesn't have any eternal value. Then we're worshiping the true living God that promises us eternal life. Okay? People who have a lot of money, a lot of the time, 
they they can't sleep at night. The stock, if the stock market goes down, you know, that's going to keep them up at night. You know, oh man, they worry about the 401k, they worry about their, um, their investment. They, they, they don't even have time. When you have a lot of money, you don't have time to, when you have business left and right, you have all these investments, you have a lot of stuff going on, you are occupied by your wealth, you are occupied by your money, because that's who you worship, that's your God. So you don't have time to cultivate a relationship with Jesus Christ. And next thing you know, you just drop dead, boom. Just like that, you're gone, all your money, you don't have any money, now you're gone, you're dead. All your money is left behind for your family and, and relatives, so-called family relatives to fight over while you're dead. You do your funeral, everybody's gone, now they're trying to fight over your money. You know? That's what happens when you don't have the right perspective on life, where money is about everything. You know? That's the reason why it's good for a lot of people to to leave America because America will brainwash you into thinking that the thing that really matters in life is having money and this is having power. The thing that really matters in life is cultivating a, a relationship with your creator. That's the only thing that matters because once you take your last breath, all that money, all that power, your status in life, nobody cares. Nobody cares. Okay? Can you tell me who was the richest person 100 years ago? Nobody cares. Nobody knows and nobody cares. That's why nobody cares. Because you are, you only matter when you are alive. Once you're dead, people forget about you. Even your loved ones, they have to move on. Once they do the funeral, they bury you. Eight months, six months, a year later, Everybody move on. Life goes on. Okay? There was only one person that died that that the world stopped. That was the Lord Jesus Christ. He died to give everybody life. Jesus died to give everybody life. You know? So, you are not that important. And most people, when they have money, they think they are important. But you're only important because you have money. Once you lose all your money, all your friends gonna be gone. You're not gonna have, you know, it says, I think it says in profit that you have a lot of friends when you have, when you when you could give them stuff, when you could help them out, when you could take care of them. You know, once you start giving people money, you stop, you don't have any more left, then your friends gonna be gone, okay? So that's the deception of money. The deception of money is that you think that you are something because of the money, like like you you are you take you like the Bible says, if you take you something when you really nothing, you deceive yourself. Okay, you only something because you have the money. If the money was gone, you wouldn't be anything. So it's a deception. It's not real. It's not real. You think all these people that's cheering your name, they really love you? They don't love you. <clears throat> Okay, just like a lot of celebrities, like musician, when they making, you know, when they drop a hot album, everybody loves the music and people buying it. They have all these friends that come to the concert; they want to see the autograph. But like five years later, five years down the road, if they haven't put out a hit album, nobody cares about them. Nobody's checking on them. Nobody's, you know, trying to find out oh, what happened to this person. Is, is he okay? Nobody cares because you had that one hit song that people love, but that was five years ago. You haven't put anything hot since then. So nobody cares. Now you can't even get no shows. You can't even get no booking. You know? People, if, if, you, have, if you put your uh, trust and your wealth, and your status. You know, what happened when you start losing those things? What happened when you're not as rich or you're not as famous anymore? No one's gonna check for you, you know? 
and no one's gonna check for you. A lot of a lot of um celebrities, for example, like well not just celebrities, just everybody. You know, you're gonna have a rich or poor person is not is you're gonna have more friends when you become when you're rich. Because that's the deception of being rich. They only around you because they know you could give them stuff. You could pay their bills, you could give them money for their birthday, you could go out and you will spend your money on them. So it's not a genuine love. You are deceived. You're thinking that this person really loves you, but the person's only wishing because you have money. You know, a lot of women call them gold diggers, you know. You're 70 years old, you marry a woman who's 45, you think she actually loves you for who you are. You know, no, she doesn't love you for who you are. She loves you because you're a multimillionaire. If you was a greeter at Walmart at 70 years old, you wouldn't be able to pull somebody who's 45 years old. Let's be real. You wouldn't be able to pull a 45 years old. That's a good, a very attractive 45 years old woman. If you was working at Walmart and living on, on your social on social security, making twelve hundred or thirteen hundred dollars a month, you only able to pull up have a model, have a woman that looks that attractive, but she's forty five years old and you seventy, is because of your wealth, because you have money, and you know that too, but we like to deceive ourselves thinking that, oh no, that she's with me because. She really likes you. No, she doesn't like you. She does not like you. Okay? So, wealth, money is deception. We have to see it what it is. We have to stop thinking it's anything better than, you know, than it, you know, it's, it's deception. You know, you could get, you could get all different type of women or you could get a lot of friends as long as you're giving money away. Okay, so I'm glad you guys taking the time to listen to me. I want you guys to understand that this life is short. Do not live for uh, temporary. Have an eternal perspective. Live for eternity. You know, put God first. Turn away from your sins. Do not idolize anything because it's corrupted. It does not last. Is uh, this life is is fleeting? We this life is only a blip. So do not place your trust in anything but the Lord Jesus Christ. Check yourself. Ask the Lord to change you. You know, check your um. If, if you like anything, if you see yourself putting anything before the Lord, tell the Lord to help you. He's a gracious. He's a gracious. He's a merciful God. He's always willing to listen. Always willing to help his children. Thank you guys. May the Lord bless you.